This video is very quickly going to go over how to set up a suction filtration. So to set up uh, suction filtration, what you need is a few different things. You need filter paper, you need a filter funnel, and this black ring which helps create the vacuum to pull the air through the funnel, a sidearm flask, and a suction source which normally is a vent either on the bench top or inside the hood and you should also have a trap attached to it. This is a trap that stops the liquid that you are filtering off from being sucked into the house lines um, and hurting them. So to set it up, it's relatively straightforward. You take your sidearm flask, put it inside of the three-prong clamp, take the end that is open here and attach it to the suction filtration flask like this. Then the black ring goes on. Now one thing about that is you want to make sure that the lettering face, uh, faces up. If you do it the other way around you don't get nearly as good of a vacuum. So then the funnel goes in like that and then finally the paper goes inside the funnel. Now, for the paper, you need to make sure that all of the little holes in the funnel are covered. So, we have our basic setup now, and all we need to do is turn on the vacuum. So, we reach over, turn on the spout, and you're going to start hearing air being pulled. Now, at this point, many students think you should not be able to lift this up, but you can easily because air is still going through the funnel. If you really want to check whether or not the vacuum is pulling well, just put your hand over the top a little bit and you'll start to feel the vacuum pulling on your hand um, in a suction manner and you'll know that it's working well. So the last thing to do before pull, pouring our sample onto the suction filtration is wetting the paper if you choose to do that. Now if you choose to wet the paper, make sure you only use the solvent that you are filtering your product out of anything else and you may run into solubility issues. Uh, many students just try and use water all of the time, but if your product is soluble in water, it'll actually dissolve it because it doesn't all get sucked away before you put your sample in. So to wet your uh, paper, just put a few drops on it, wet it. This will allow you to see the holes in the funnel through the paper normally. And also by wetting it, you hold it in place. Then it's just a matter of pouring your sample in and the suction filtration will pull the liquid off very quickly and you're good to go. Now, if you have sample left in your beaker here, or sorry, in your flask here, um, no, it's a beaker, in your beaker before, after pouring it over, what you can do is use some of your solvent, whatever it was that you just poured off, to kind of wash it over um, with the rest of it. But for now, I won't worry about that. We now have collected our sample, and it's there. You have a fairly good vacuum going on at this point because the sample is over the holes blocking the vacuum, the air from being pulled through. So to retrieve your sample, you just simply turn off the vacuum and lift up on it, and there you can see our sample uh, has been collected. Now the final thing is how long do you let it sit with air being pulled through it? That completely depends on the individual, the sample, and the individual setup. So you just have to kind of keep an eye on it until you think it's dry. This one dried very quickly because they're very large particles I threw in there, uh, but sometimes you may have to wait two to three minutes for it to actually dry. 